in the symmetry. So, such a great such a great thing does not have an underlying commutative ring because of the sign, but it's still a commutative algebra that we use to find the rock. So, uh, so these we call the rock rings. And now you can build uh, a geometry where these are the affine building blocks, just like uh, uh, the so, uh, so what about this degree here? So, uh, efficient is not in the nature of topological dynamics. What is spinning? So, uh, so uh, we think it's really more like spin. So, we define the spin to be minus one half of the of the homological degree. So, also the even the elements in even degree. Are symmetric and the ones in odd degree are anti symmetric the way uh, <coughs> fermions and bosons are. Uh, so, 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 Grotendick has said that for, for something to be a geometric property, uh, it has to be stable on the base chains. And uh, so, there's a new geometric uh, property here, namely. Uh, a map of the rock rings. Okay. If from A to B uh, is even if uh, it's the base chains from its restriction to the even part. So if this is, is co-Cartesian. So, uh, so this is a geometric property. <laughs> so now I got one in the name set. So then the problem is not that I run this there. Uh, yes. Uh, so this is a geometric property. It's a uh, stable on the base chains. Uh, and it's local uh, on source and target. Okay. Uh, yeah. So uh, I, I will get back to that later. Uh, so risky, say, but probably much more. Yeah. So, uh, so let me now explain what localizing invariants are, and uh, uh, I think this go, goes back to, or the, this idea of non-commutative motives goes back to the talk that the uh, Konsevitz gave here uh, for the Lin sixty first birthday. So. Uh, <clears throat> So then uh, Blomberg, Geffner, and Tawada <laughs> has produced this properly. And uh, Efimov has found a much better way of, 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 of doing this. And uh, all of this would not uh, be possible uh, without uh, Lurie's great gift to humanity. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So, uh, so Lurie has defined this fantastic uh, infinity category of presentable infinity categories and left adjoint functors. And uh, it promotes to a symmetric monoidal infinity category. And uh, we have the full subcategory spanned by the stable presentable infinity categories. And uh, now inside here, uh, we have the non-full subcategory. Uh, so this is the non-full subcategory. Uh, 
uh, spans uh, by the dual isoform. stable presentable infinity categories uh, and uh, and the functors uh, that admit <laughs> uh, a co-limit preserving a right adjoint. So all functions in here have a right adjoint, but it may not preserve uh, co-limits. And uh, so in here, we only consider the, uh, the maps that preserve uh, with the right adjoint, preserve co-limits or equivalently has a further right adjoint. Uh, this subcategory is closed on the tensor product uh, and it's also closed on the co-limits. Uh, but limits and internal hum in this category are uh, very different from what they are over here. Uh, yeah. So, uh, yeah. Uh, so this uh, infinity category is semi-additive Uh, but it's not stable. So its objects are stable infinity category, but uh, this infinity category itself is not a stable infinity category. <clears throat> and uh, Let me add it in there. that uh, finite sum and finite product agree, and this is zero. Finite sums and finite products agree. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if it might actually be true for any diagram indexed by an anima. That's true in PRL. I'm not quite sure if it's true here. It's not true. Okay. So, but finite is okay. Okay. So now a functor. Uh, from here to a stable uh, presentable infinity category uh, is a localizing invariance <laughs> if uh, it preserves uh, zero objects uh, and if it takes by Cartesian squares uh, to co-Cartesian squares And finally, if uh, it preserves uh, filtered co-limits. So it seems that this uh, third condition here might be negotiable, and uh, but I think it's, the situation is not quite clear yet. Uh, yeah. So, uh, so uh, Blom Blomberg, Gettner, and Tavoada gave such uh, showed showed that there's a universal localizing invariant when you restrict to compactly generated uh, categories, and then Efimov uh, discovered that uh, in fact this extends to all dualizable. Um, so. Uh, So uh, Maxim Ramsey has proved uh, a nice theorem which gives a, a different way to, to set this up. 
namely he proves that this infinity category of dualizable stable infinity categories itself is presentable. So uh, in fact, it's omega one presentable. Uh, therefore, uh, Lurie's theory of, of localization in presentable infinity categories e immediately implies that there's, uh, that there's a universal uh, localizing invariant. So this is And so the target of this uh, universal localizing invariance is, uh, is the stable infinity category of non-commutative motives. Uh, also this uh, promotes uh, to a symmetric monoidal function. Uh, Ramsey, Maxim Ramsey, he will be here next week, so you can meet him. Yeah. Let me also mention uh, Yeah, so I should say this this category of non-commutative motives is what uh, conceive it's introduced. Uh, but this now gives a much better understanding of it. And uh, Ifimov has has proved uh, the fantastic theorem that that this is itself dualizable. Uh, in fact, it's rigid. So it's not only dualizable, but it's a self-dual. Uh, yeah. Uh, okay, now let me give uh, an example of a localizing invariant, uh, which is, uh, is TH8. So, uh, Uh, yeah, so Hoywa, Shirotka, and Sibylla prove that uh, the assignments so let me see I think I need more space so, uh, so if we have a dualizable uh, stable infinity category so That means we have a map of uh, stable, infinite, presentable infinity categories like this and like that, and that the triangle identities hold. Uh, so this is a diagram in here. And uh, what is the tensor unit here? That's uh, the presentable infinity category of spectra. 
And so this composite map here is a, a co-limit preserving functor from spectra to spectra. And such a functor is uniquely determined by what it does to the tensor unit in here, which is the sphere spectrum. So its value on the sphere spectrum is is THH. <clears throat> and uh, so maybe I can do it like this. <clears throat> uh, so this promotes uh, to uh, a symmetric monoidal localizing invariant. from a dualizable stable infinity categories to a spectra with an action of the circle group you want. Uh, there's more structure here. There's also the Nikolaus Schulze Frobenius. Uh, I don't know if the analog of this has actually, I don't think it's written anywhere at least, uh, <clears throat> that, that it promotes to a cyclotomic spectrum. Uh, yeah. Uh, okay, so this is, so this is non-commutative geometry. And then uh, now if we have commutative geometry, then we should get motivic filtrations on things. And, uh, <clears throat> Uh, yeah, in fact, I gave a talk at the MSRI five years ago, and uh, there I asked if to get a motivic filtration, it's enough just to have a symmetric monoidal structure. Uh, I don't think many people believe that that was true <laughs> at the time, but uh, it has turned out to be more or less uh, correct. And uh, yeah, so this is uh, so this is the next part, uh, which is yeah. Is it with the matter of U one or B U one? Well, that's is, what is what does it mean that a group acts on an object? What what is an object in an infinity category with a, an action of a group? It's a map from B T to uh, yeah. So this is so this is just a category of functions. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, yeah, and then no. Let me first say a little bit about uh, uh, a good way in which, or a way in which commutative algebras uh, can arise, namely, uh, if we have an E naught algebra in a symmetric monoidal uh, infinity category, so this just means uh, this just means uh, a map from the tensor unit to some object. Then, uh, then we can define. Then we define this to be uh, eigenpotent if uh, well. Let me write it here. So. So this E naught algebra is eigenpotent if uh, once we tensor it with A, we get an equivalence. Well, if this is an equivalence, then we get, you can see we get a multiplication by taking an inverse. Uh, and this is true in uh, 
with all with as much coherence as you can uh, have, namely, uh, if we consider E commutative algebra, so this is E infinity algebras here. So this is commutative algebras. And we define a commutative algebra to be eigenpotent if its underlying E naught algebra is eigenpotent. meaning that this square is Cartesian, uh, then in fact, this map here is an, is an equivalence. So every eigenpotent E naught algebra uniquely promotes to uh, an eigenpotent uh, commutative algebra. So, so Lurie proves this in, in higher algebra. Uh, let me also give this example with which is also in higher algebra. So, uh, in uh, so for if if C is is PRL, so presentable but not necessarily stable infinity categories. So here, the tensor unit is uh, the presentable infinity category of any map, uh, and. And the function of sigma infinity plus from anima to spectra uh, is, uh, is an eigenpotent. Uh, e naught algebra. <laughs> well, so this immediately re implies that that spectra is in fact A commutative algebra in PRL, so it's a some presentably symmetric monoidal infinity category, and therefore we can consider modules over it. And this is uh, the infinity category of stable uh, presentable infinity categories. <laughs> so, see if any. Uh yeah hmm? what is what that's anima the infinity category of anima so, uh, or the infinity category of spaces in, yeah. uh, but I think anima is better because it's, these are not topological spaces. Uh, so I also want to give another example of this, which is, uh, which is from, uh, so Clausen and Schultz in their course on the complex geometry, uh, introduces a generalization of Grotendieck's uh, prime spectrum uh, to a spectrum that takes a commutative uh, algebra in uh, here uh, as its input. And uh, so suppose we have such, a, such an algebra. And uh, now I suppose that we have an eigenpotent uh, uh, E naught algebra in C. Uh, well, then we get a stable work called Monk. So we get a closed part, which is the A modules in C. So again, here C promotes to a commutative algebra. So there's no problem in defining this. Uh, and this now embeds fully faithfully into C. The forgetful functor is, is fully faithful. And it has 
a, a left adjoint I upper star and a right adjoint um, upper street. And uh, now we can complete this. So here we have J upper star, J lower street, and J lower star. And uh, so this is how they define open and closed uh, subsets corresponding to such an eigenpotent algebra. Uh, yeah. Uh, so now I'm a little out of space. Maybe I can. Maybe we can sacrifice this. And also these functions behave in the way you expect. Uh, so uh, this gives an example of such a, a bi-Cartesian square here. Uh, namely, we have, uh, so we have C of U uh, here, J lower three to C and I of a star to C of C. So this is now uh, uh, a bi-Cartesian square. Uh, in. <clears throat> well, maybe let me assume that this is dualizable. Okay. Let me also say when such a square, what it means for such a square to be bi Cartesian. So if such a square is co Cartesian, then it's also Cartesian if and only if this function is fully faithful. Uh, in particular, we, we can see that, that this category uh, of dualizable stable infinity categories is not uh, stable because if we, for example, take this Cartesian square, uh, this co-Cartesian square here, then this is uh, not Cartesian unless this Function is fully faithful, and uh, which is typically not. Yeah. So. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so. Uh, yeah. So now I should erase what happened over here. Okay, so uh, so now I, I will talk about the even filtration. So, uh, and I will just do it in this case of uh, topological Huxel homology uh, considered as a functor to a uh, spectra with a uh, circle action. Or in fact, let's let's fix a prime and complete everything at P. And so we say that a commutative algebra in P complete spectrum with circle action is even if its underlying spectrum is even. So meaning that its, its homotopic groups are concentrated uh, in even degree. So, 
so uh, what are examples of such things? Uh, if if S is uh, a quasi regular semi perfect or a ring. So P is not the same object, right? Hmm? P is a It means P complete. Okay. Yeah. So uh, <clears throat> Yeah, so we so P complete spectra is a full subcategory of spectra. Maybe we can call this the lower star, and then that has a left adjoint, which is a metric monoidal, and then uh, and then the unit. Here is P completion. Okay. So, but now the tensor product I will use is now the, this P completed tensor product in here. Okay, so uh, such a, if this is semi, quasi regular semi perfect toit, then, uh, then THH. by which we mean TH8 of the S modules in say P complete spectra and then P completed, uh, then this is even. Uh, another example is, uh, yeah. The technical condition of bounded to closure subcategories is in the definition of class regular search of spectrum. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, suppose we have the ring of integers in a, a complete discrete valuation ring with perfect residue field, and we take th8 relative to uh, the width vectors, the spherical width vectors of the residue field. Uh, and adjoin a variable which we map to a uniformizer, uh, then this is also uh, then this is also even. You can ask Jacob. <laughs> so <laughs> so the the bit vectors promote uniquely to a flat uh, infinity algebra over uh, the sphere such that on pi naught you get the uh, the the usual bit vectors <clears throat> yeah uh, let me erase some more Hmm? This? 
so this is uh, the commutative algebra and spectrum. This is the spherical vectors, and now this is the flat affine line. So it's uh, the monoid algebra over the natural numbers. Yeah. K is a local field. K is a local field. Yeah. No. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. <clears throat> And uh, so, so now for for B even, uh, the even filtration of a uh, The Tate spectrum for the uh, circle action on B is uh, now defined to be the uh, double speed uh, Posnikov filtration of uh, the Tate spectrum of uh, B. And, uh, and then we extend uh, to Uh, to arbitrary a, a by right conic station. <laughs> so, uh, but but now Han, uh, Roxit, and uh, Wilson prove a theorem uh, that tells you how to to actually understand. Uh, the even filtration if you are not even to begin with. And uh, so that uses uh, the notion of an uh, evenly faithfully flat map. So so define a map to be uh, evenly faithfully flat uh, if, if for every base change or co-base change Uh, such that a prime is even <clears throat> so if uh, in this situation the the induced map Uh, of the rock rings uh, here is even <laughs> uh, and uh, faithfully flat. So that just means that it's faithfully flat and that this is an even ring because here this is assumed to be even. <clears throat> uh, an even. An evenly faithfully flat map is not faithfully flat. So this is 
uh, yeah. So, so if we take pi star of f, that will not be faithfully flat. And on the even on the is it true that it is tends to the flat on the even part? No. Oh, no, it's, no. It's when they are even when the yeah. e prime is expressly prime. So for example, uh, the unit map from the sphere to MU uh, is evenly faithfully flat. So you can see here, this is even, but here you have, uh, yeah. Okay. And uh, <laughs> yeah, so now. Pan uh, uh, Roxit Wilson proved that uh, if S uh, in here, is evenly faithfully flat. Uh, will be even uh, then the uh, <clears throat> even filtration uh, of Uh, the U1 state spectrum uh, of A uh, is calculated uh, by the check complex of like this. <laughs> Yeah, so <clears throat> uh, so if R is quasi symptomic, and uh, maybe I have to say bounded P torsion. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, and if F is a quasi symptomic uh, cover with S uh, quasi regular uh, semi perfect torque, then uh, Uh, then the induced map on P complete uh, TH8 uh, is an evenly faithfully flat map. Uh, with even target. <clears throat> so, but now in in this situation, if we take uh, if we take this uh, left hand side here, then uh, that is the uh, Batmore Schulze definition of uh, 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 of their filtration. So 
So this shows that the even filtration and the uh, BMS filtration uh, agree uh, for uh, <coughs> TH8 of uh, something process in tonic. Uh, in the other case, so <coughs> <clears throat> so if R over OK is quasi-syntomic, then this map is uh, evenly faithful and flat. Uh, again, with even target. Uh, this is the map that Liu and Wang used to uh, understand uh, this. And uh, sorry, is R supposed to be QRSP? To be what? <clears throat> why, why was target even? Yeah, uh, because I put the C here. R could be like. Let's 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 just do this. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, you can say something more general. In particular, it shows that uh, the filtration that Liu and Wang produce of this is uh, the same as the uh, BMS filtration. Okay, now, uh, Now, in, in general, uh, if uh, if F is uh, in here, uh, is evenly faithfully flat, Uh, with even target, uh, then the the spectral sequence associated with the even filtration takes the form, so uh, where X <laughs> So I'm going to say this is a Dirac stack, meaning that I have Dirac rings as test objects, but since everything is even, you can also say this is a stack uh, over, over BGM. And uh, so, uh, so it's birth of pi star 
of B tensor over A. Uh, Tate. Yeah. So, so here I use the whole braided ring instead of taking pi naught. Uh, I could take pi naught and then I would have a pi two, which would give me a line bundle and uh, I could express it like that too. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Yeah. Ah, okay, okay. Yeah. <clears throat> well, so uh, <laughs> as derived as it can be. <laughs> well, <laughs> except I, no, I mean, because this is, uh, uh, I don't take derived rings as input. I... So the DRD completion is just, sometimes the DRD completion is not just in the Q0. Yeah. So you take the full, the derived ring DRD completion of this, or not? Well, so this is this is already periodically completed, and then uh, I just take homotopy groups of that. So the yeah, <clears throat> so the pi star is on the outside here, right? The, the what? Uh, this is actually a one stack. Uh, well, not in this generality, but in, uh, yeah. So if, <clears throat> so if R is quasi symptomic, then, uh, Then we had this map here. And uh, so in this case, uh, X is the prismatization of uh, R uh, up to Nygaard completion. Uh, <clears throat> And uh, let me say that to remove uh, Nygaard completion, uh, 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 one remove one replaces T H H uh, by uh, a Frobenius untwist. So I'm not sure how to write this plus one or minus one. Yeah, let's, let's write minus one. Uh, and uh, uh, so such, such an, an untwist uh, appears in the, in the relative situation in, uh, in uh, batmore schulzer and uh, the analog here has been uh, defined recently by uh, uh, Manam, 
and uh, by uh, develop Korka. on Roxit uh, and U1. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah. So I have uh, one minute left. So let me just uh, <clears throat> point out this uh, Uh, another general result of uh, Han, Roxas, uh, and Wilson, which is that the map from TH8 uh, of MU uh, to MU is uh, evenly faithfully flat. Uh, therefore, if we have any MU algebra, for example, any ordinary ring, then the, the co-base change here is, is the relative uh, TH8 relative to MU. So if this is evenly faithfully flat, then so is this. <laughs> uh, so for rings R such that this is even, we can use this to, uh, uh, to understand the even filtration of uh, of th8 uh, in the situation that uh, in this situation here that Liu and Wang consider uh, <coughs> so the homotopy groups here stay even but the first time you get a polynomial algebra but then in the higher terms in the in this co-simplicial resolution you get very complicated algebras if you do this instead, uh, then in fact, you will get polynomial algebras uh, in all degrees, but now of course in infinitely many variables and uh, there are no canonical variables. So uh, uh, it should be expressed in a different way, but, uh, uh, but, but that looks uh, uh, promising. Uh, yeah. Let me just say one more thing. So uh, in, uh, let me just say it. Uh, so in, uh, in, in Thomas Lang's talk, these uh, Lubin Tate spectra appeared and, uh, uh, and Berklund, Slang and Yuan have proved that within commutative algebras and spectra, these behaviors, if they are algebraically closed, However, uh, their K theory and their THH is not even. So this suggests that uh, an algebraic closure should live elsewhere. So that maybe there's an algebraic closure, which is a commutative algebra in PR stable dualizable instead. Yeah, and uh, there are many wonder wonderful things in uh, in that are commutative algebras in the stable dualizable infinity categories as, uh, as uh, Clausen and Schultz have demonstrated with their uh, analytic uh, geometry. Okay, sorry, so let me stop here. <laughs> Other questions for the speaker? <laughs> is there a nervous result for TP? This is TP. But you write T, T, H, H. But I also say you want to it. Yeah. You can ask if there's analog analogous results for, for TC minus and for TC. And uh, uh, the answer is yes, uh, except for TC. Uh, I think for TC, there's an interesting question, which is that you can consider TH8 as a 
counter to cyclotomic spectra. Uh, and there you also have uh, a T-structure, namely the cyclotomic T-structure, and you can consider the even filtration with respect to that uh, T-structure and uh, how does that compare to the, to the BMS filtration. So that's an open question. Question. So it's a very sophisticated and inspiring. So I will maybe think about it. Ask you in the. So let's. Uh, let's uh, <laughs>